Welcome, Welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey, everybody! Welcome into episode fifty-one. This episode is a very timely and relevant episode because we're going to be diving into how to pivot into web design from a different industry. And obviously this is so timely right now because of the coronavirus pandemic. And I have seen a huge uptick in people learning web design who are coming from different industries. And so for me personally, this has been just an incredible season of my life because to be able to teach people how to build awesome websites and grow their business, it's just, I mean, this is why I do what I do. And uh, I've seen a lot of people diving into web design from different industries. And for a lot of people, they might have had a, a web design business on the side as a side hustle, but then are forced to do it full time. And that's the case for the guest I brought in for this episode. My guest today is a close colleague of mine. This is Amr Salim. And he is my go-to guy for anything domain, email, cPanel, database, or all the unfun stuff of web design related. Uh, we call him the website plumber. I think it's a great brand. It's a great name. But the reason I wanted to bring him in is because he is in the thick of it with completing his pivot into web design full-time. So Amr actually only did the website plumbing for me kind of part-time. It was about 10% of his business. The rest of the time, he was doing um, consulting and kind of like a headhunter for tech companies. And he was assisting with with hiring and matching talent and stuff like that. Uh, that was about 90% of his business. And as you'll hear through this episode, that 90% of his income dropped completely in March of 2020. So when the pandemic just went wild, he lost 90% of his business. He was forced to take web design full time. And in this episode, you're going to hear how he did it. I think this is going to be, I know this is going to be so inspirational for you guys. Even if you're not in this situation, if you just want to know how important it is to have kind of a, a backup and plan and how to have these different streams of revenue. I mean, this conversation, guys, is just so valuable through and through. Amr, he's just such an awesome guy. I've been working with him for several years now. Uh, he is somebody who I just have have grown to to really love and admire, and I respect him so much. And you will too after hearing this episode because he is just such an inspirational fella. Man, I'm just I was so pumped up after talking with him. I was just fired up. So I can't wait for you to hear this. And more importantly, for those of you who are about to pivot or maybe you've been pivoting into web design, I think you're going to find this conversation super beneficial for you. So make sure you hang around because we talk about valuable stuff all the way through. It is a longer one, but man, you're going to love it. Now, if you are pivoting into web design, there's a lot to it. Uh, and as you'll hear about through this episode, there's just a lot of things that you need to learn and you can either you know learn it by just Googling stuff, you can learn it by years of experience, or if you wanna fast track your journey, that's why I'm here for you. And if you didn't already know, I have nine web design courses right now that cover a wide range of topics to help you in your web design journey. And I have them all bundled up into my web design course bundle. So if you think, if you look through my courses and you think, you know, I want to, I want to learn SEO, but I also want to learn Divi and WordPress, but I also want to learn design and I want to know how to grow my business. You can take them one by one. You're welcome to do that. But the most cost effective and quickest way to go about it is to join my web design course bundle. And I actually wanted, instead of me just talking about it, I wanted you to hear from somebody who is going through my bundle right now to hear what she has to say. This is Ellen. Hi, my name is Ellen. I bought Josh's course bundle um, after looking to all of the courses, not really knowing where to start. I reached out to Josh, um, who was really, really helpful um, and gave me a schedule of sort of which courses he'd recommend starting first. Um, but in the end, I just bought all of them. Um, all I can say, Josh, is thank you so much. They have helped so much already. Um, I have now completed two of them and I'm now into my third and I can't wait to complete them all because they're just that's so good. So there you go, guys. That's from one of my students who is going through the bundle and has been seeing awesome results in her business. So if you want that too, check out the bundle today. And I would love to be able to help you in all these different areas of your business so you can pivot to web design quickly, cost efficiently, and successfully. And we can do this thing together. Before we dive in, one quick announcement. Now, through the rest of 2020, through September, October, November, and December, I am going to be putting out two episodes. That's right. Count them two episodes a week for you guys. This is my goal. This is my pledge to you. 
I've had a lot of people uh, requesting, well, not necessarily requesting more, but say they can't wait for the next episode and they've been binging the episodes. for. So if that's you and you've been diving into a lot of episodes, you are in luck. I'm going to try this out now that I've got a really nice schedule with my podcast. I have a VA, shout out to Cam, who's helping me with distributing my podcast. I'm able to put out more. So I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to see if two episodes a week is too much, not enough. Uh, I imagine it's not, you know, imagine it's, it's going to be fine uh, two episodes a week, but hopefully you guys can keep up, keep up with it. Let me know if you're digging the two episodes a week as we go along. I want to hear your thoughts and how it's helping you out. All right, guys, without further ado, enjoy my chat with my man, Amr. And man, get ready to get pumped, get ready to get inspired. Amr, welcome to the show, man. It's great to have you on. Hey, Josh, great to be here. First things first, are you proud of me? Because we've been working together for like three years and I, it's taken almost that time to finally pronounce your name right, but I got it, man. <laughs> You're not the first one. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is great. I mean, I, I love the fact that you got my first name, last name right. Uh, and the fact like your story is so in- inspiring. Like those, we've been working together for what, three years? Yeah. And yeah. Only, only this year, I don't know, why I didn't read it before, because it's always been on your website. Uh, but only this year I learned about the cabinet making part. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Yeah, it is kind of funny. Sometimes you work with somebody and then it's like, oh, maybe I should check out their about page like a year after we've been yeah. working together. Because same <laughs> with you, man. You have an incredible story and that's what this talk is going to be. We're going to talk about how you've pivoted and how you're currently pivoting. So this is kind of like a case study style episode. Uh, but yeah, man, we've been working together for a few years now. You are my go-to guy for anything email and domain related and the website plumbing stuff, which I know we're going to talk about that because that's kind of your brand. But it is funny. I mentioned pronouncing your name. And uh, <laughs> when I refer you, I usually have to send either an audio clip or a quick video just to say, by the way, you pronounce his name Ammer. Uh, because really? <laughs> it, for, <laughs> for at least Midwestern folk, it's uh, it's a tough one. So. Uh, but hey, uh, I love to start out by just asking uh, where you are and what you do, which I know that's what we're going to talk about here. So I'm northwest of Ohio. I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. Uh, I've moved to Canada in 2016. So I'm a new Canadian and I still don't understand hockey. So please don't take this against me. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. You're going to, I imagine living in Vancouver, you're going to have to learn because obviously, you know, I'm a big Jackets yeah. fan, but, uh, but that's all right, man. And actually I, I don't want to derail us right from the get go, but, uh, I would actually real quickly, I think it would be good as a reference point. Um, what made you move to Vancouver and what did that look like? Where'd you move from? I moved from Dubai. So originally I'm Egyptian. Uh, I've been away from Egypt since 1993. Uh, I go back, visit, have some holidays there, see the family and so on. But I've been living, well, outside of Egypt from 1993. Uh, I've done one, two, three, four continents and six countries before I ended up in Canada. Uh, so the, the last stop before Canada was Dubai in the, the UAE. Gotcha. What, what, uh, what made you look at Vancouver? Is there any specific reason? Mainly the weather. <laughs> when mm. I looked at the Canadian map and you look and it's all minus, 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 and then you go all the way to the west and it's like two. And, you know, the, the worst temperature in winter, we, we do get some snow, of course, and we do get some sub-zero temperatures, but they don't last. So we, we're blessed with slightly warmer weather than the rest of the country. It and, rains uh, a lot there, right, I imagine? Yeah, but with the rain, this is the thing. With the rain, it's absolutely stunning. Like it's so green, and and the 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 topography of 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 like or the 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 yeah, like you know the nature in British Columbia. You have a lot of hills and small mountains and bigger mountains, and uh, so when you look, it's like it's a graded. It's almost everywhere you go is a picturesque scenery. Uh, even if I like, if we were doing this just outside where I live. You wouldn't believe like it's like living in the forest. Mm. And of course, we get bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I have heard because in the band days, we traveled out west and we were up in Washington. Same thing. It rained, but man, it got it got nice one day and it was like, dude, it is freaking beautiful here. That's what everyone said. They were like, it rains a lot. But when you get those nice days, man, it's there's nothing better. Yeah, we have a similar weather and I think the nature is also 
some of our parks are like uh, half American, half Canadian. It's just like one big park. Mm. And if you don't take your passport, you're in for trouble because if they catch you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I imagine. Yeah, because Vancouver, you're only what? What's the drive to the U.S.? Like half an hour, hour Blaine, or something like that? The first city is Blaine. Uh, and that's half an hour. Yeah. Okay. And then okay. Seattle, Seattle is about an hour. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I'm going to get you into hockey. That way you and your family can, uh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about the weather when you go. And actually, uh, so do you have a, you have a couple of kids? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my son plays soccer. My daughter isn't into sports pretty much. She's more into design. So maybe she's the one who will inherit the business. I don't know. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> well, let's talk about that, man. You, you got a family. Um, your business is pivoting. You've pivoted for a while. Um, why don't you take us back to like February this year, 2020, right before COVID, all that stuff happened. What oh were you do? Yeah, what were you doing? Like what uh, your business is human talents and just why don't you explain kind of what you were doing uh, with yeah. that and then also in the web design world? So the name human talents itself, like uh, when, I, when I've decided to start my business. So back in Dubai before moving, I used to work for a large software company uh, that was uh, making or selling, implementing, and supporting HR systems. So anything to do with an employee in the company, so all the way from the hiring part, recruitment, hiring, to retirement, and anything in between, you know, payroll, whatever it is. It was like a large software company, and I was in charge for the team that does the implementation and customer support. So it's all like kind of back-end stuff and how to tie things to work together. Mm. Um, more on the functional end, we used to do like a customer portal and design it and, and the whole thing. But of course, first we make it work. Second, we make it beautiful. Uh, so when I moved here, that's a good way I, to go. <laughs> Better to go that way than the other way around. <laughs> yeah. Make it work. Then make it beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So when I came here, I had no network. So I've chosen British Columbia. Uh, as I said, because of the weather mainly and because it's beautiful when I came to check it out. I came first on a visit visa, brought the family, just wanted to make sure everyone will like being here, right? And we loved it. Uh, so when I moved here, I had no network. I knew nobody, right? And I said, okay, I'll start my own business. So the first thing that I did, I registered the name Human Talents because I wanted to continue to be in HR and recruitment systems. Mm. That obviously didn't work. So... <laughs> <laughs> trying to sell software when you know nobody. And, um, but what happened, you know, the people who I met, I suddenly started to realize there were some gaps in, in some things. So uh, I have switched first to web design, just being the regular, your regular web design agency. Pretty much like how you started when you moved to, you know, uh, uh, become like a full time designer. But I also somehow got into recruitment, you know, being in HR systems and, and this, we realized there's a huge gap, specifically software developers in both the United States and Canada. Mm, okay. Um, okay. If you talk about Canada on its own, before COVID-19, of course, um, we needed somewhere around 280,000 software developers. Wow. Like the, wow. the Canadian software companies and tech companies in order for them to grow and just, you know, reaching their, reach their milestones, they need that large number. Now, Canada is an immigration country. The total number of immigrants from all walks of life is about 300,000. So there's no way you can have 280,000 software developers out of the 300,000, right? So what, what I did, I, I linked with, uh, with a company here, a local company in Vancouver that specialized to bring talent from anywhere in the world. Uh, pretty much like the United States used to do in the past few years with the, I think it's called the H1N visa or something, if I'm not mistaken, where people of a certain you know, uh, skill set that's needed are given a work permit. So they don't have to have a green card. They don't have to be a US citizen. They can just come work for a couple of years and leave. And of course, some of them would stay, and after some time, they become citizens. So it's pretty much the same. But so I got into that, and it worked, and it was so self fulfilling because you're also helping people change their lives. Like, yeah. you know, you get developers from other countries, 
who are dreaming about becoming Canadian and they want to come here, they want to raise their families here, but they don't know how. And you've got the local companies who need the talent, but they're a little bit kind of scared. What does it entail when I sponsor somebody's work permit? Mm. And my job was like the matchmaker. It's, it's pretty much, I used to say it's pretty much like dating. You, <laughs> you know the two sides very well and you try to make the right match. And that was great. And at the time, it constituted 90% of my income. Now, comes February 2019, uh, sorry, 2020. Um, things slowed down a little bit, but they were okay. Comes March, and it's a complete halt. Mm. And that's when, by the end of March, it's when the government closed everything. The shops and the malls and the offices and, and everybody was forced to work from home. And you could see the Canadian tech companies, they're not hiring, not only that, but some of them were laying off. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't pretty. And I, as a person and as a business, I lost 90% of the income. Wow. And you were still doing the web design stuff with like the stuff that we were collaborating yeah. on with site optimization, domains, and basic web services. But it sounds like that was only what ten percent or so of kind of what it you were doing. It was on the back burner. Yeah, I was I wasn't advertising it, and I wasn't getting any new clients. So I had some clients on my maintenance on the on, on my monthly or annual maintenance plan. Sorry, and then I had the uh, some of the jobs that would come from my partners like you, uh, when people wanted to move their emails or their website is too slow or something broke and they want it fixed. So all the plumbing and backend stuff, and I would rarely accept any project for a new website. I just didn't have the time. Gotcha. Gotcha. It makes sense. And and you were doing that under humantalents.ca, right? That we still yes, all... Which yeah. is still the case. Yeah. Which we're going to talk about my recommendations <laughs> for you because I you go by the website plumber. I think it's a great brand. I think it's a great name. And it's truly what you do. Like You do the stuff that I don't want to do. And uh, you've been a great referral partner, but this is fascinating, man, because like what a valuable story and valuable idea of having this little recurring side income that is now what you do. And that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. Like what um, I imagine there was fear, panic, uncertainty, overwhelm this mar this past March, like uh, what it what what did you do? Did you realize like I've got to really ramp up my web design stuff? Yeah, what what did you do at yeah. that point to get started? I, I was stunned and kind of I wasn't angry because things happen, right? You know, um, I, I always say change is the only constant in life. So there was no anger there, but there was kind of like boom, it hits you like a train. You don't know what happened. It's kind of like all like nobody told me anything. I just realized. Customers aren't hiring anymore, so I've got, I've got no clients. <laughs> That's mm. it. It's also it's, it's also a period. It's a season too. Like you know, it's yeah. gonna snap out, but that doesn't. You don't know how long it's gonna take, and <laughs> you've got bills to pay. You got a family to feed. Yeah. So I realized, you know what? Okay. So uh, and this is something that I'd like to tell our audience. Nothing defines you. You define you. Right, you should. You should. We shouldn't be defined only by what we do for a living. Uh, we're all like a mix of, you know, uh, intelligence and feelings and like a lot of good things. So yeah. So I I didn't get scared because I've you know um, I've changed my uh, my career quite a few times and you know uh, and I've changed where I lived quite a few times. Uh, so it doesn't scare me. Uncertainty doesn't scare great. me. I just like take it head on. Uh, so I've decided, you know what? Okay, I'm going to be the best website plumber there is. Uh, the first step was let me try and figure out how do I get my message across. Uh, and I'm still figuring it out. Uh, but since I know that, you know, designers, uh, web designers specifically, most of them, I would say not all, but most of them hate the, the back end techie stuff, especially when it comes to emails and DNS and. 99.9% <laughs> nine of web designers, I can tell you with full confidence, hate that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Myself included. And uh, yeah, it, it's all kind of like, uh, and, and you know, the thing is over the years, like previously, uh, I mean, I learned HTML in 
was it 1997 or 98? Uh, so previously, when we used to just do like an HTML based website, basically all what was there is just text and a few images. There's nothing. There's no interactivity. There's no services. Now it's all like kind of building a software. It's no longer just a website. It's kind of a, uh, I don't know, like a, <laughs> a big pot that, that, that has all the services inside. Right. And there's WordPress, data, are, yeah. yeah, databases, files, emails. I don't want to scare anybody, but yeah, there's there's a lot to it. Which clients, it's kind of our job to help explain to clients. Yeah. It's not just an image online. There's a lot of moving parts here. And you have MailChimp or you have a calendar that, that you know, where people can book you or like you always have to have a service. Like your website should actually be servicing your clientele instead of just pitching for you is also, you know, otherwise they won't come. Great point. And, and, and that's, that's, that's funny because like also recently I've had some conversations on Facebook uh, because I've realized many local businesses, and I'm sure like you see the same in the States and over the world, they rely heavily on social media and neglect their websites. Yeah. And that's very dangerous. So, so yeah. So anyway, so I've decided, you know what? Okay. Instead of me trying to compete in a market that has so many other web designers, and some of them are way more established than me, older. They've been doing it for longer, whatever. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I've been doing this stuff from 2000, but not full time. I, I, I was more interested in the server side and <laughs> in making things work in the functionality. So you, I mean, I, it sounds like I, yeah. you, you realized like, yeah, you could put yourself out there as a web designer, but the yeah. market is saturated. It's harder to get into that. It's, it certainly I means what I teach all my students how to do it. However, particularly if you want to go mainly online, like if you want to get mostly remote referrals, you really do need to separate yourself from the crowd and either become exactly. an authority or do things, capitalize on what you do best. And that's exactly what you did. Like it sounds like you realized I like the stuff that nobody else likes and yeah. you you rolled <laughs> with that. And I I saw that you kind of updated your website um, is that what you did? Did you just kind of take those services and highlight those as far as like what yes, you do best that's and what, what you I'm enjoy? trying to do? Because it, it all boils down to, uh, you know, what I like doing and, and what I think will help people the most is to find their, their, their person, like, you know, the, who you're going to call Ghostbusters. So I'm your, <laughs> I'm your Ghostbuster. Yep. Uh, you know, when, when you're the, the plumber, you're the plumber, man. Yeah. You are the website plumber. <laughs> So, and I realized that like so many web designers um, who need help with this, like, so it's better to tackle things as a team. It, you know, it's better for me, I get some work. Better for you, you get your customer stuff done professionally. And, you know, you have the confidence that when, when the, you know, when things are not going well, you and know, who I, to call and, yes. Yeah. And I will say, as a, a referral partner and colleague of yours, it saves me so much time and more importantly, sanity. Like I'm good with, I'm good now. And I have a whole course on C panel, yeah. as you know, because I realized there, somebody needs to teach people about this stuff because yes. it's crucial. Like I'm good with databases and SQL and my PHP, my admin and all this stuff. However, I still don't want to do it if I don't hate. have to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I hire you out because you take the client, you run with, particularly email. Email is yeah. a whole other ball game. And how, like, so one question I have for you is, do you separate these into different services? I, I kind of know this, but no. I'm going to ask you this. Like, how does, how does that work really. for your, I, your I, services? I, I don't know. I mean, like, okay, I'm, I'm shooting myself in the foot if I say I'm not good at marketing, but like, <laughs> I, I am good at marketing. I just don't spend enough time doing my own. Like if I do it for a client, that takes the priority to make sure that things are working well for the client and they get the results that they should be getting. Right. But then when right. it comes to doing my own website or my own stuff, oh God, like you gotta like time that's me the, and- Yeah, that's the struggle the we all face, and- right? <laughs> yeah, we all, yeah. Web, de web designer with a terrible website or it's like a, a auto mechanic <laughs> that has a crappy car that doesn't work, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's like, I, I do sometimes uh, professional websites assessments. And uh, when I do mine, Oh my God, there's so much that needs to be done. So when you when you pivoted and you realized, crap, 90% of my work just dried up, 
I've got to yeah. take it to the next level. It sounds like you embraced what you did well and, and you, you did, you know, you kind of, even though you may, may not package them separately, you, you do have yeah. these services and kind of explain what you do. Um, what did you do like right then to get clients? Cause I know you, you talked about, you know, not marketing yourself. However, yeah. you had to get yourself out there. So in a way I know you have, like, what did you do? Did you go through Facebook groups? Did you call your existing network? What did that look like in, in like March? Part of it was a little bit of luck. Uh, and a lot of it was hard work. So uh, I'm a member of the local chamber of commerce and I'm one of their ambassadors, which means I attend lots of, you know, uh, events and things like that. And when everything closed, everything became Zoom. So mm -hmm. in the past, I wasn't able to attend all of the events because like, I don't want to drive or I'm too busy somewhere else. But when it's a Zoom and you're just sitting home, it's easier. So I've attended so many of those. And um, my other nickname, I know I love the website Plumber more, right? Because it's new and it's funny. And, and it, it was bestowed upon me by a client, by the way. Like when I was trying to explain what I do, she said, oh, you're like the plumber. So <laughs> that's the best way to get a name. I, people call me, I'm kind of go by the Yoda of Divi and that somebody in my Facebook group is like, you are the Yoda of Divi. And I was like, Ooh, I like yeah. that. <laughs> also, I'm a big star Wars fan. So I liked it even more, but absolutely. Oh God. Yeah, me too. So yeah. So the other nickname is the internet guy. And, and that nickname was, was you know, surfaced 2000 because when I've decided to make this my specialty, like I, I studied, you know, uh, all the servers and the networking parts and, the, you know, all the boring stuff, TCP, IP, and whatever at the time. And uh, because I would set up all these systems, like I used to set up internet servers, you know, uh, a lot of people back then used to host, especially big companies, they wanted to host their own websites in-house uh, for one reason or another. Maybe they don't want to be hosted outside the specific country because they have some sensitive information. So they want to have their own email server and their own web server in-house. And I used to set that up. Uh, so at the time, <laughs> I was nicknamed the internet guy. Yeah. I was, you know, the one to make it possible but that for makes, them to host. That makes sense that that's more like a broad-based type of IT yeah. per personality. Exactly. However, yeah, the website plumber is much more specific to web design, which right. obviously is what you're capitalizing on, on or excuse me, capitalizing on now. And, and did you um so yeah, I like have no did, idea, Josh. I mean, first of all, great idea with the making every Zoom meeting because that's the same thing my networking group did. We we met on Zoom. Uh, and I encourage a lot of my students to do that. Like you may not have, I mean, honestly, that's, what's a great thing about COVID is that there's not a lot of groups meeting in person now. You can just <laughs> yeah, do it through you Zoom. You don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> and as web designers, that's right down our wheelhouse. We meet on Zoom. We can teach people, you know, like, here's the link. You could do some basic training on that. And then you're like the trusted person. And then that's a great lead to web design. So you, that, that's a great point. Did you do anything on like social media? I know where you're involved yeah, in some Facebook so, groups. I was always in these Facebook groups. I wasn't as active, so I started to become more active and try to help as many people as I can. Um, I suck at pitching anything, so I just give you the answer. And you can go and do it yourself. You don't have to hire me. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's the best way. You put something good out there, something comes back to you somehow. And uh, I, I, I linked with a gentleman, very nice guy from Scotland the other day. And he said that my reputation on the group is quite good. And like, I didn't even know I had a reputation on the group. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'll tell you this, Amr, and I'll tell this to everybody listening. The worst way to sell yourself is to try to pitch. All you have to do is to be helpful and to teach, whether that is a Facebook group, because that's what I did. Like, I just started helping people in Facebook groups. I started saying like, hey, here's how you can fix this. And of course, I started making tutorials and I said, hey, Here's what you could do. Here's a free tutorial on it. That's how I built my brand. That's how I became authority. And quite frankly, that's how I sold websites for over a decade is I would just, you know, with my network, people on my networking group or leads, we would sit down and I would just ask them about their problems. I tried not to come across salesy. I just tried to help yeah. them and just laid out a plan. And I mean, it takes all of the weight off of sales. If you just be yourself and just teach and just share what you know. That's sales, baby. That's it. And that's what you're and doing. You know, like, we are more of like we're we're wired as delivery people. Like we're not we're not your average salesperson who will be pitching and moving from one place to another. 
because we are the ones delivering the actual service. It, it's different because in a in a big agency, you've got these two distinct, you know, uh, specialties. Yeah. Sales and service or delivery. You know what? And I didn't think about this, but I love that you said that because. And so the question would be like, why? Why are we that role? And I, I know it's because. When you sell a website or a web design service, you are starting a relationship that's going to last a long time. It's not like a used car salesman that you sell a car, you're done. You get commission, you're never, ever going to hear that person again from that person again. As a web designer, you're starting a relationship. So that's why it's so important to come across like that. Uh, and particularly, for most everybody who listens to this are solopreneurs or freelancers or small agencies you're going to have a more personal approach. You're not going to, like you said, have that agency mindset where you've got a sales team, they make the sale, then they turn it over to the designer. No, for us, it's we're engaging in a relationship and an experience that's going to last a long time. So I love that you took that approach because it's definitely the right approach to take, particularly when you're getting clients online uh, remotely. And I actually wanted to ask you too, now that we're talking about some sales strategies, is one big method I... Uh, mentioned to my students and I really promote is to take a different approach. Don't do ads. Don't do stuff where you're, again, you're pitching yourself, take the more organic approach, make relationships, do networking, help people. But one thing you can do, which is what you did is to interview people or to do some sort of podcast or interview series or something like that to where you bring people together. And then particularly like in a chamber of commerce, if you do an interview series with members of that chamber of commerce in your local area, what a great way to build relationships and become an authority. And just for everyone's reference, that's how you and I met. You were doing interviews yeah. for human talents and then you reached out to me. I had just started joshhall.co. I don't know how you found out. Maybe it was Divi or something, how you found out Divi. about me. But yeah, Divi. so you you reached out and you wanted to interview me. And I was like, yeah, I checked it out. It looked like you were legit. Um, you, you weren't like, hey, can you send me leads? It was like, hey, I want to interview you. <laughs> and you didn't even tell me what you did. So I agreed. And uh, it's still on my website. I'll link that in the show notes for yeah, this, our, our interview. It's, it's I, a very old one. It's too long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, long, long is good, man. I love long. I think most of my audience like the long form stuff because uh, it's good. It's detailed, yeah. but uh, it's not rushed. Anyway. You interviewed me, and that's yeah, I think how I wanted we. Yeah, I you to tell the people, my audience, what does a, a good website? What's a good website? Like, what are what are the right? You know the, the ingredients. The criteria, yeah, the yeah. ingredients of a good website. Yeah, and yeah, we did that interview, and then yeah. we were talking, and then I kind of asked you, like, so I just wanted to find out more about kind of what you did because you didn't sell, you didn't pitch to me, which was just the perfect way to go. We built that relationship and trust first. And then when I asked you a little bit more about what you did, you were like, I really like database and domain and email stuff. And I was, I was like, what? You like that stuff? And I was like, I'm hiring you immediately. And then more. So just going back to sales and in general, and this is crucial. This isn't off topic with what we're talking about because this is how you pivoted. And this is crucial for everyone yeah. getting into web design from a different industry. I know a lot of my students have come from I've got, I've got a couple Uber drivers who are now doing web design. I've got teachers. I've got people from all different industries now right. getting into web design. And this is it. You have to build a relationship and you need to get people to know, like, and trust you. you the beauty and the, the great thing about this is you don't have to sell yourself. So if you're terrified of sales, that's fine. So am I. Don't, you don't sell yourself. Just yeah. be helpful. And that's what, exactly what you did. And then we built that. And then when I asked you, then you told me what you did. But more importantly, here's the important part. You actually came through. Like when I gave you a job, you did really good and you were punctual. You didn't disappear. You helped me and my clients out. Like in the early days, I remember the first couple of referrals when we did email migrations and stuff. First of all, I learned from you. I learned like I watched your process doing email migrations and domains. So it was a great learning experience for me which is another great part of like hiring other people to do something. But I kind of oversaw it. Like I linked our calls up. We would talk to the clients together. Now yeah. I just say, oh, you need an email transfer? Here's Amr. Talk to him. Here's how to say his name. And then I hear good things. I get an email back a week later and the client's like, hey, he was great, man. He's like my guy. And I know it's funny because now a lot of our clients are emailing you directly, right? They like come back to me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... So it's just great. I just I don't mean to you know take a take us off on a tangent, but that's a great lesson on how to sell, particularly 
during this COVID-19 time and this pandemic where a lot of the stuff's online and you may not be able to do as much locally, you still can, but that's it, man. I mean, is that, is it safe to say you kind of capitalize on that strategy to really start building your business? Yeah, and, and the good thing is like, I realized that, you know, I always think what is stopping any, any business owner from being successful online? Like what's, what's the issue number one? Usually it's tech. So you, people, a lot of people, they want to move forward and they're either scared of tech or think it's too expensive or like one way or another, it will be related to tech. And uh, the, the, the fun part of it that I realized that even sometimes I ended up, and I'm still doing it, fixing laptops. Like I ended up sometimes like, you know, driving to uh, the chamber, for example, to meet someone. I'll just open my car's trunk and then they'll drop eight laptops, I'll take them home, fix them. And then <laughs> it's like we're, we're dealing weapons or something like that. <laughs> yeah, here's the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, yeah. like having those additional services and what I like to call secondary services is great to open up leads for your primary services. And I did that for years. For years, the main thing I did was website design. And then I also did logo design, branding, print, stuff like that. And then eventually I moved away from that because my web design business took off and it was so reliable that I just did website design, maintenance, and SEO. And then I would hire out the other stuff. Uh, but I'm a big proponent. Like if you have secondary services that you enjoy and that get you those leads, then by all means go for it. Even if it's not exactly in the same industry. I mean, I'm leery about people yeah. being too spread thin no. with different services. Don't However, yeah, if you can manage it and still do your primary service. I mean, I like when I was doing print design, uh, eventually, again, it just came to the point where I realized it just, you know, it opened a lot of doors in the early days and it was great. However, it wasn't as profitable as web design. So once I got to a certain point, I knew I had to cut it off and hire it out. However, that said, I can't tell you how many great three, four, five thousand dollar $5,000 website design jobs I got off of a business card design initially. I yeah. I would do a business card and then uh, they'd be like, oh, it was so great working with you. And I'd say like, you know, awesome. I'm really glad you enjoy it. If you need anything else, you know, here are some other services I do. And then they're like, oh my gosh, you do websites? Yeah, I need a website. Um, one of my best clients, a steel company here in Columbus, Ohio, uh, I got referred to them for a brochure. They just needed a brochure. And then they went to my site and found out I did web design. That turned into logo, brochure, branding, photography, and a big website design. So, um, you know, same idea. Those secondary services can really translate to a lot more work. I would say do not add services only based on, uh, you know, that these things are in demand. Uh, the first thing is, do you enjoy doing it? Like, this is the thing. Like for me, for example, graphics, like when you say print and graphics, I get scared. Uh, I learned Photoshop when I was younger. And, but I realized that because I was at the time, like pretty much a perfectionist, it could take me the whole day just to get one logo. And then I'll sleep and wake up and do some more edits. Gotcha. And it would be like <laughs> never ending. So I've decided I'm never, ever going to touch graphics again. So like, that's why that's why you're so great at the back end stuff because there is a right and wrong way to do yeah. website migrations and email setup. So I'm sure for a personality type like you, it's very gratifying. Like what one two three four, it's done. You know, like, it's like and math. it's done right. Yeah, for me, it's yeah. like math. It's like it's either one plus one equals two, or it's something else, and we need to make sure that it's back into equals two, right? Gotcha. And uh, gotcha. I don't know, like I the part that makes me like happier now is solving a problem. So when someone is saying that, um, you know, something is broken and it's very important and we need it fixed, like this gets, sorry, I, I think I'm running out of battery. So I, uh, just connecting the, uh, Oh, no problem. Perfect. Yeah. So like, just make it work. Like usually people call and say like, Hey, you know, we've got this problem. Something is happening. It's not right. Uh, the website is too slow. And then, you know, can you just make it faster? And like, you know, there's so many reasons why the website could be slow, right? And, and th this actually, there's one thing that I want to say to our audience here, which is uh, I'm hoping there's so many designers listening to us and business owners, not necessarily designers, but generally business owners. So, um, you know, when you want your website to be fast, you got to think about how websites work, like what happens. So basically, in a nutshell, 
you renting the hosting is like you renting some space on a server. So if you're using SiteGround, you, you're on SiteGround servers and you've got some hard disk space where your files are located. I, as a website visitor, when I go enter your www.business.com, that's a request. And then I'm asking the server to give me all the resources of the home page, which is the text and the images and the JavaScript code and whatever you have on the page. Now, what usually happens if people have optimized the visuals only without looking into functionality and how things work, you end up having a banner that is huge right the the actual dimensions of the uh, josh of course you know that but i'm I'm just trying to make sure that our audience also knows that no this so, is great <laughs> if the screen size the average screen size of i don't know a macbook is whatever 14 15 inches and you know if the biggest screen size in somebody's office is 22 inches you're looking at a full HD, maybe uh, uh, 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, and that's HD, right? What's the point of having a photo or a banner or an image that's 3,000 pixels by whatever? It won't show at this dimension, and it will just clog the pipe that brings this website to the user. <laughs> I love that you're using plumbing analogy to keep, keep, keep streamlined with your brand. Yeah, so if... If you wanted to show at 800 pixels by 640 pixels, well, actually make it 800 by 640 and then upload it. Don't upload it at 3,000 and then go and tell the browser, hey, I wanted to resize this when the user is requesting it. Because the browser will take a few seconds to actually you know, do the interpretation of what size you want before it gives it to the user. Yeah. And that's yeah. reason number one, websites are slow. It's big images. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I see people like, I have like 500 lines of CSS. Is that a problem? But then they upload like a five mega, megabyte, you know, slider image. And it's like, nope, that's yeah. your problem right that there. That is a problem. Uh, yeah. So, so I'm glad you're talking some technical stuff because again, it goes back to like, you know about that. That's kind of, that's what you're promoting. Well, not promoting. That's what you're helping with people. And that's leading to sales. Like you're doing those things that, Quite honestly, you know, there's a lot of resources out there and I'm putting more out on optimization and speed and it's something I'm working on myself. But that is kind of like your bread and butter. I love that, you know, you're yeah. doing those things. But again, going back to how you're helping people, like you're getting into the nitty gritty, you're explaining stuff. And again, you're, you're doing that, sounds like through Facebook groups, um, you know, local Zoom meetings, Chamber of Commerce and stuff like that. As I mentioned, you interviewed me for your internet guy show. Are you still doing that at all? No, not anymore. I, I'm a little bit more active now on YouTube again after you know neglecting YouTube for a few years. And uh, I've just started to see the results of that and I'm having a lot of fun. And uh, I also would love to start uh, doing some mini courses uh, specifically on optimization. Uh, I've like one of my latest YouTube videos was to teach people how to select the hosting. Because most mm. people select the hosting based on the company name, and that's wrong. You shouldn't select your hosting based on the company name. Of course, you want to host with someone who's reputable because it's dangerous to host with those you know, companies that no one has heard of. Uh, but it's not the company name or the cost. It's what's in the hosting plan, like what's, what's the technical stuff, like how, like, you know. So I've decided, I've realized that Everybody, even after I made the video, I shared it on some of the Facebook groups. I still see the question. Hey, guys, do you recommend this hosting company or that hosting company? And sometimes I, I you know, I want to give them a link to the video, but it looks a bit cheesy. So I end up just typing whatever is in the video, because if I put the video, they think I'm trying to pitch. So <laughs> Well, what, so what you could do in that case is you could you know, give them some free info, say like here, you know, it's more important to, you know, to look at the, the server specs, what you need technically. And then, 
you know, give them the answer, but then say, if you want a little more detail on this, here's a free video. That's kind of how I go about my tutorials. I don't just say, Ooh, watch this. I say, yeah. you know, here's, here's what I recommend doing. Here's why. And then if you want more info, here you go. That's honestly, that's, that's one of the best ways to, to get people to, you know, to engage with your stuff. And I think it's a great idea, man. I mean, I know it's probably another recurring revenue, which I want to ask about kind of what the game plan is moving forward. I think that's really valuable too, for people to know not only about you, but to think about how to add this to their businesses. But yeah, doing some sort of recurring slash passive like courses and training. I obviously, I mean, that's what I do full time now. I it's love that. just, yeah. oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. Doing a course yeah. is no joke and it that's takes why, constant. That's why it's not done yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it sounds simple, just like a website. Oh, I'll just design a five page website. Then, you know, 50 hours later, you're like, oh my gosh. Uh, but, you know, I'm a big proponent of it. It is a lot of work and it's really more what I do now is like refining the courses and doing content marketing. But that's what you're looking at doing, which is super valuable. The thing about content marketing, which if you're unfamiliar with that term for anybody listening, that's basically blog posts, videos, anything content related or in and around what you're talking about and teaching or or providing services for if you're a web design agency is to do that and to, you know, basically give good info, but then have that lead to something more. And that's what I've done for, for several years now. I've, I mean, 90% of my content is still free. So like technically on the books, it was very costly yeah. for me for the first couple of years because I didn't sell anything. I had a couple of layouts, but until I started doing courses, I was basically just giving stuff for free. I mean, the cool thing about that and the reason it's paid off for me now is I built up a strong catalog of stuff and I've owned the Divi tutorial space from an SEO perspective, which again, a little side note, if you want to capitalize on organic SEO, good, consistent content, that's, oh, that's the name of the game. Like that's really what it's all about. It just takes time and persistence and consistency. Uh, but I say all that to say, I love that you have that mindset because now you're you're building good content and it may not pay off right this second, but it will pay yes. off. You're already seeing the fruits of what your, your YouTube stuff. But yeah, I would encourage you, Amr, for sure, to have some resources, free tutorials, webinars, trainings, because this is what I'm built. This is kind of what I'm doing right now. Build up those free resources and then build up the next level of resources, which might be like a download. Like if somebody wants to get your guide on email migrations, you could have like the basics that people could download and have, but then that then leads to an e-course that, and it doesn't have to be a thousand dollar course. It could be 97 bucks or something that, you know, here's the advanced stuff. That's what I would encourage you. And also what I would encourage other people to do. And even if somebody is not a course creator, it can still translate to your service business. And this is the best way to get clients. Don't throw yourself out there and say, website designs for only $27.99, you know, something like that. You don't want to come across like that. You want to give free info that gets, you know, teaches people and then have something else, have a, what we call a lead generator. Like it could be an ebook or it could be a webinar, some free training that gives people a little more. And then from there, that's when you can introduce your high ticket stuff. And that's what I did for my networking. That's really how I built my network is I was in a networking group. People knew I was a website guy. We would do presentations like every couple months I would present because we took turns presenting and I would do a presentation on conversion or Google analytics or stuff like that. And then they would be interested in more. And that's when we would meet or we do a call and I'd give them more info. And then that's when I found out their website sucked. And then that's when they were interested in doing a redesign. That's when I came in with a three, $4,000 website. And then they moved forward because going back to what we talked about initially, they, they got to know me, they got to like me and they got to trust me. So that's exactly the path of sales. Like it's not rocket science. That's the, yeah. I mean, it's not the only way to go. There's a, I mean, ads do work, you know, sometimes and you can go about that, but uh, again, going back to the fact that we're service-based deliverers of service, that's huge, man, to, to come across like that. So that's that would be my recommendation to you. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but that's my recommendation, man. Yeah, it's definitely on the to-do list. It, uh, I, I tell you, I, probably my fears are very similar to everybody else's fears. Uh, one of the things you, you start thinking sometimes, oh, but it, what if I make the course? Because, you know, it's very much hard work, even if it's a small course like the amount of hours that you put in creating the content, then you do your video shoot, then you do your video editing, then, you know, you make sure that everything is hosted on a, on a great, fast, 
you know, video delivery network that is not going to, <laughs> people are not going to be waiting forever to, yeah. <laughs> to watch. Yeah. There's a lot of, of, of work. And then you think, what if nobody likes it? Or what if nobody even sees it or whatever? However, having said that, this is a legitimate fear and everybody will go through this. But let me tell you like a, a, a little, it's not a story, but something that happened. As I was saying earlier, sometimes you go and you answer a question in one of the groups. And then the same night, somebody else will be asking the question on the same group, which means they haven't seen it previously answered. And that's the nature of things. So when we think that, you know, oh, this topic has been covered by 200 others. Why am I talking about the topic again? Well, some people would just see yours. Some will see the others and some will see yours. So it's, you know, it also, it's a big it's, universe. <laughs> yeah, it's a big universe. And the same topics can be talked about by different people. I mean, I have, I'm big on coopetition. I, a lot of my best friends and my best yeah. colleagues are straight up competitors of mine. Yeah. Um, you know, I like you've, I think you've been through Tim and David's business course, right? Yes. Yeah. They are, they are competitors, but they're like some of my best friends and I refer people to that course and they refer me. And we actually, interestingly enough, we have a lot of the same students and the people who value different viewpoints and experience are saving so much time and so much trial and error because it's so valuable to get different perspectives on the same you subject. A different angle. Yeah. You yeah. Because angle. When it comes to like website proposals, there is no right or wrong way to do that. So somebody can go through their course and see how David and Tim do it, but then they go through my course and see how I do it. And it's completely different, but it's still equally valuable because they can take what they liked about Tim and David's approach and what they liked about mine. Then they can refine and they it and make own. it their own. Exactly. Actually, funny enough, I just had a student sign up, shout out TJ, uh, who went through John Wooten. He's a he's a, a competitor, but great colleague of mine. He has a course called Break Into Web, highly recommended. He has ex different courses as well on CSS and cPanel. But he went through that course, learned a lot, and is going through mine as well because, again, he wants to learn things from a different perspective as well. It's not that he didn't like John's course. He just wanted to learn my perspective as well. And that investment is, yeah. I mean, the ROI on that from learning from different professionals and the different viewpoints is key because again, you're not locked into one path. I mean, I, I teach everybody what I learned based off of my path. Like this is what I did. This exactly. is how I do it. But I'm very open in yeah. saying this is not the way, this is a way. And it's just so valuable. And to take this away from courses, to talk about this as a practical way that people can implement this into their businesses this is how you can tell website clients and leads the same thing. You can tell them, you know, this company charged, you know, 500 bucks for this website. I charge three grand, but this is why the value is different. That's their way. This is my way. I had a client ask me one time in the early days, I, I quoted 1500 and she was like, Hey, I got another quote for 500. What's the difference? And I explained to her like, well, you know, here's the difference. This is why I'm more valuable and I'm not going to come down on my price because I know the valuable, I know the value. This is why I think this is what they're not providing and this is what we're doing. It's fun. I didn't know we were going to take the conversation here, but it's funny that we mentioned this because just yesterday, oh, yesterday I, I sent a video out with a, a company we did a, a $3,200 uh, or $32,000 proposal for, which I feel pretty confident we're going to get. I've talked about this in a few recent episodes but they're shopping around, which I told them that's a fine idea. They had one proposal come back between 10 and 15,000. They had another proposal come back between 15 and 25. So they were just curious, what's the difference mm. between your guys' 30 plus and these? Well, and we you. looked yeah. through their proposals. We found that it was very clear that first company severely underestimated their project. And they also did not do the SEO audit and research that my agency did. The second company did much better. However, it still was not at the level that we were going to provide as far as the value. And it was clear they didn't research and plan like we did. We gave them like a game plan for what we're going to do. And we also are going to take a lot of work off their shoulders. So I had to kind of explain the difference. And this all goes back into sales. Like, and this is huge for, you know, if you're, if you're pivoting during COVID, it, you can absolutely, you don't have to be a salesperson. You can be no, a helper no. and you, and it's okay. Like if there's different price points and value, like you just explain 
have confidence in your services and who you are, to your point. You just reminded me when you mentioned that with, I had, a, I had an inquiry from one of my past colleagues who is now selling, you know, um, I think it's fashion, like clothing and fashion items and maybe some handmade stuff. And uh, she was doing it from a Facebook page. It was all like in her local community. So people would see the stuff posted there. There was no website. There's nothing. There's no e-commerce yet. It's just they'd see it on Facebook and then they'll call her and somehow they'll send her the money, arrange delivery, which is a lot of headache. And she was looking at Shopify and she was asking me for my opinion. And uh, based on our conversation, which lasted for about two hours, because <laughs> an hour and a half catching up and half an hour on the business. <laughs> But uh, I, I would have, like, I recommended uh, WordPress with WooCommerce. And then when it came down to the cost, you know, she was looking at, okay, why would this, uh, you know, storefront cost somewhere around $8,000, whereby on Shopify, I'm only paying $130 a month. Oh, yeah. And th the thing is, okay, there, you're not comparing an apple to an apple right then it's not the same shopify is kind of a, a hosting platform uh, with software ready made to make things easy for you like the payment gateway the checkout process the cart and all these things but which is easy to use and great to work it's it's you know i've got nothing against it right but you are the one who's going to actually go and put each and every product in Whereby, when we build it for you on WordPress and WooCommerce, you will give us a folder full of images, and, <laughs> and we, we suit ourselves. We, we are going <laughs> to actually build your products and put them in your storefront for you. That's a lot of work there. And then if you have like 100 plus products, of course, it's going to be like way more expensive than even the 8K that was, you know, quoted. So yeah. you're comparing... A hosting platform to a fully fledged service, and they're not the same. It's also a, that's a great analogy for like Wix and Squarespace and some of these other self hosted exactly. do it yourself or because they all just for everyone's reference. I actually I'm planning on doing a, uh, an episode soon to talk about this in a little more detail because I've had this conversation more than I can count with leads and clients. Those are self-hosted systems that you just don't control. First of all, you don't own anything. WordPress is open source. You yeah. own it. You can do whatever the heck you want with your stuff. Shopify, I don't think it's going to shut down, but they could just close one day and you're screwed. Wix, Squarespace, a lot of these other do-it-yourselfers, you have no control. The SEO, I know you know this, Amber, the SEO aspect of all that is terrible. Uh, and the problem is you're just limited. You you can't customize things like you can with WordPress. And in the case of e-commerce, WooCommerce, that's one reason I use it. It's what I use on my site and what we do all of our e-commerce sites with. And I used Shopify, I did a site, I think back in 2015, and it was a nightmare. As a designer and as a coder, we had an absolute nightmare of an experience. I remember I had just really got used to Divi and I was like, dang it, man, I... If we if we only had Divi with this, it would have made yeah. it so much more easy because we had to like code everything. It was just a nightmare. And it's yeah, hard Shopify when it has zero control. Yeah, all the yeah, all these other platforms, they sound enticing because they're low cost, but you find out you the problem is the time. You end up doing it yourself. And let's be honest, if you want to find a Shopify developer, Shopify developer, they are like three or four times more expensive than WordPress yeah. developers. It goes from like 75 to 100 bucks an hour to like 200, 300 bucks an hour. Um, a lot, yeah, it's, that's, that's a huge You know the analogy I use, Josh? Those. These are like having an Airbnb. So if you go and rent an Airbnb and the Wi-Fi in your Airbnb is not working, the Airbnb owner, the person you're renting from, will not allow you just to go on and buy your own router and put it in their place, right? So this is what it is. This is what you get. This is the platform. This is the service. You cannot change anything. That's a great, I'm totally going to rip your your idea <laughs> off in my in my upcoming <laughs> podcast on that because it it's kind of like just renting a house. Like if you rent, you're limited. 
you can't do everything you want. Now, if you own the house, aka, or, you know, I have WordPress, WordPress yeah. you can do whatever you want. You know, you may not own the property because the government owns it or whatever, but just like WordPress, you know, it's owned by automatic, but you can still do whatever you want. You can put anything on there. You can sell it eventually. You can do whatever you want. Um, so that's a great analogy. And, and again, this is just huge for, for just sales and what you're doing in your business. You know, you're, your website plumber brand is problem solving, <laughs> doing stuff people don't want to do. And I think it's interesting that you're helping client to client, but you're also helping web designers. Are you looking at doing yeah. maybe like more white label stuff like with folks like myself, because I refer yeah, you all the time. Definitely. I, to be dead honest, I hate the sales part. So I've always thought like, what if somebody sells and I deliver? That will be like the perfect collaboration. And I'm glad it has been working and, and it ramped up since March. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, more collaborations with great designers and I, where yeah. I can learn as well. Because it's fun. Look, it's all about having fun. It, you know, what gets you up in the morning? What gets you out of bed? Well, I love that you get up for email migrations because I would stay in bed <laughs> all day. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I've literally like slept in because I'm like, oh, I do not Oh wanna... God, I need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, great point, man. It's something that I, uh, I'm teaching a lot of my students how to do that too, to be Divi white label designers, particularly for those just starting out. I actually, uh, with one of my students, shout out Shannon, uh, she is doing both. She's doing client services, but she's also doing Divi white label services as kind of a, uh, a way to get more work as she's getting started. And there's so much room and opportunity for that because a lot of people are scaling their agencies or they just don't want to do the work. They A lot of people yeah. like marketing and like sales, folks opposite of yourself, and they want to hire that out. And that's kind of like where I transitioned from at the end of 2017 into 18 is I went from doing everything to starting to be more business owner minded and hiring that out. And look, there's no right or wrong with that either. Like a lot of people feel pressured to scale their business and to do something they don't want to do. But I am a big proponent of if you want to be a solopreneur and a, and a freelancer, that's fine. Do that as long as you want. That's what I did. I did that for seven years. I did it all on my own. I did start to hire people out occasionally in like 16 and 17 and maybe 15 um, I, I don't know why I said it in that order, but 15, 16, and 17, <laughs> that's when I started like hiring certain things out, but I still primarily did everything on my own. It wasn't until 2018 when I, my mindset shifted. And part of that was because I went through some business coaching, which was invaluable. And it made me, I also just realized I'm at a different place in life. I'm starting to have kids. I can't do everything. Uh, and yeah. I've taken that same mindset to what I'm doing now with joshhall.co, like what I'm working on after our call here. I'm putting a uh, a VA position, like a job opportunity yeah. together, because I'm going to look for that. a VA. Yeah. So yeah, like I, I'm going to, I'm also, I know, like I can't edit. If right now, I'm doing everything with joshhall.co. I'm editing all the episodes. I'm doing all the emails. I'm doing all the the post writing and stuff. But I know I, I can't continue to do it and and keep it at a certain level. So that's kind of what I'm starting to, to to hire off. So I say all that to say, don't feel pressured into you know, either way, like you don't have to feel pressured to make a big agency, but you, you realize too, if you're a solopreneur and you realize, crap, I'm doing way too much. I need to offboard this. You can do yeah. it and it can work great. Like that's, and that's again, going back to the, the thought of being like a, a white label partner, kind of what you're doing, but then a lot of what my students are doing, that is a great option too. work with people. If you want to do the design, awesome. Do the design, tell people you're a white label partner, you do the design and then they can do the sales and marketing and it can work out great. That's, that's one awesome thing about web design too, man. It's just yeah. it's whatever you want to do. And it's the, you know, like, okay, you do the website, you do it yourself. Cause I understand many of our listeners would be your students or, you know, uh, Tim and David's or, or somebody else's students and they want to learn. So they want to get their hands dirty and get it done. But you don't have to worry about the part which is, you know, the maintenance, the security, the hosting configuration, the email configuration. That will eat up a lot of your time. And, you know, uh, you'd rather actually concentrate on your customer relationship management and making sure that everything is on track. Yeah. So if that's, if that's the part that's like, you know, where you usually get stuck, there's no need for you to try and be everything. 
<laughs> yeah. My, my recommendation, this is what I tell all my, I talk about this in my business course and I tell this to all my students when we're talking, I tell them, do everything at first, just so you have a good so grasp. You know what, yeah, get a taste. Yeah. Yeah. But then the next time you get a email migration, then call Ammer and then, <laughs> and then learn from him. Like you can hire people and learn from him, which is again, what I, I did with you. And actually another yeah. one of my colleagues here locally uh, I used to have, I, oh, I, before I understood cPanel, I did not understand the database, PHP, my admin, mm -hmm. all this stuff that was crucial because I was breaking sites when I was transferring them. Yeah. I didn't understand yeah. that. And he told me one time, I'm going to get technical on everybody. This is something I cover in my cPanel course, but here's a freebie. He said, dude, did you know all you need in your WordPress files is the WP content folder and the config file and that everything yeah. else is standard? And I was like, what? <laughs> What? And then he's like, and then the database is in PHP my admin. Those are the three things. The the WordPress yeah. files that you upload are in WP my con or WP content. Your config file connects the content to the yeah. SQL file, which is your database, and that's in PHP my admin. The database. I was like, that's holy it, yeah. crap, why didn't someone tell me this before I like like my hairline dude would be here <laughs> if um uh, if everyone watching it would be there. Uh, Maybe uh, yours is back because you do the database <laughs> stuff all the time, but I don't I'm know. I'm hiding the hole at the back. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but man, this, yeah, this, this is great, man. We're talking a lot of, a lot of valuable stuff. I know we're getting technical, but I think it's very no, valuable. That's good for people. Because the, the, there is a trick, like the tools that do the migration have gone a long way. So like in the past, uh, maybe in the past five years, uh, you know, there was no, Go to tool like every time you try a migration, you probably use a different tool and mm. end up with a different problem. And they got so much better, but there are some tricks as well. Uh, as an example, again, I, I have to get tech now since you, you know, you pulled this into it, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> they can they can blame you, not me. Um, when you when you're building a website on a subdomain, right? So you have your own staging server, uh, be it on your hosting or sometimes even locally on your own computer. And you're done with your work and now this website will be migrated to the domain of your client. Now, most of the tools are good, but you got to look at all these links and stuff because the ref everything is linked. Your images, your, you know, everything that you have on the page and there are so many cases when you've moved from a subdomain to a domain that some of these links will break if you're just using like an automatic tool. So if you've never tried to do a migration the manual way, you know, with the folders and the database, you're at loss because you don't know yeah. what broke yeah. it and how to fix it. You know, I, ha I made a tutorial on that, right? I have a whole tutorial. No, I didn't know that. So I have, <laughs> I have a tutorial on how to manually migrate a WordPress website. It's my second, um, oh. well, one of my most popular WordPress uh, videos. I'll, I'll send that to you because it might be a good resource for you and some of your clients. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously you know how to do it, but uh, for your clients. So yeah, I did a tutorial on that. And then, yeah, there, and there is a plugin. If anyone's technical, you know, technical wise, um, there's a plugin called velvet blues that I personally love that will fix the links. When you do a transfer, you can do it manually too, but that's a good option. Yeah. I'll, I'll link all this in the show notes, but, uh, I'll send that to you. I'll, I'll put that in the show notes too. But yeah, I, yeah. Cause yeah, that's huge. Like there are a lot of tools that help with this stuff, but occasionally they time out or they break yeah. or they don't work between yeah. hosts and then in, in you're stuck. And um, going back to like the sales And the type structures of, uh, are different, Josh. Yes. The structures, because you may have like a network on that website or something like it. It's, yeah. You know, it could be not just like a simple website. And you know what, going back to just the idea of how to sell, particularly through like, you know, pivoting during COVID is I, I released that tutorial. It's free. It's super helpful. When people, you can look at it, look at the, like for anyone listening, they want to see that tutorial, look at the YouTube comments. Everyone is like, yeah. oh my God, Josh, you saved my life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like it's my most commented video and it just pumps me up every time I get one on that video because it's always usually good. Um, but I say that to say like that segue to so many people being interested in more of my stuff and more of my courses. I have a lot of people who join courses who say, I found you with your migration video. It was so helpful. So that kind of leads us and segues us back to just being helpful. Like that is yeah. produce good stuff. Um, whether you're doing it as, as a service business, you don't have to become a content marketer as a web designer. You can just have a couple free resources that you offer to clients. And there you go. That's your lead gen. Um, but yeah, man, you that's like you, you've got lots of information in your head. 
every one of us has lots of info in their heads, share it with the world. Like, you yes. know, I, I, I'm a perfectionist. So I'm, I'm one of those procrastinators, right? Okay, I want to shave before I do the video. And uh, I don't know, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I want the editing to be perfect and, and whatever, which takes me like an awful lot of time to get one thing done. And over the years, I realized that this is bad for a business owner. Like, you know, even if you're going to fail, fail fast so that you can learn yeah. from your failure. Well, and so, you know, like that's the other big thing with people just starting out. I understand they, they don't feel like they're confident in their services yet because they're just starting. But you just said it. You have no idea how much you know. Even if you're three months into your journey, think about how much you've learned. And And quite honestly, like if you go through one of my courses, side note, take what you learn in that course, custom, make it your own, and then give it to your clients as a resource. Like, for example, this is what people in my SEO course are doing. They're learning SEO foundational organic stuff. And I've got several people now making their own resources on their site based off of what they learned through the course. So you don't have to do SEO for a decade yeah. to feel confident. You can go through my course, or I don't care what course or training you go yeah. through, learn something. You don't have to plagiarize it or rip it off, but make it your own. Take what you learn and make it your own to, as a free resource for your clients, which is the best sales tool. So, you know, that, that's uh, just hopefully that's uh, for people who are pivoting and who need to learn to make money quick. Well, that's one of the best things you can do. Go through a proven path, which is, again, I, I don't mean to sound salesy doing this as we're talking about well, how to not come across salesy, but yeah. go through a proven path, learn from somebody who's done it. And then that will shave so much time off your journey. And then you can use that info, not only personally to help you, but to help your clients. And it's going to make you look like an expert. I've got students who look like an expert who are three, six months into their journey. And that's like the most rewarding thing to me is to, to see that because yeah, you, you don't have to do it on your own. And that's the beauty about collaborating again, like, like with you and me, Amber, yeah. I realized I got to that point in my business where I realized I'm, I don't want to do, I, I'm, I'm good with doing email migrations, but I don't, or excuse me, website migrations, but I don't want to touch email that I just, and I tell clients that's, that's not my area of specialties. It's not what I do. Here's my guy. And that's the beauty about that kind of stuff. So anyway, man, this, this has been a really, really good talk. Amr. We've covered some, some really good stuff about practically, you know, what you went through. I love personally that you didn't fall apart when you lost 90% of your no. business. It was like, here's my, my challenge. I didn't believe it. Like, like, why are you so calm? I said, like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> it's a pandemic in the whole world. What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was funny because I didn't know going. that. Yeah. Like, like you didn't, yeah. you didn't reach out to me or anything. I, we, you were helping me. I, I got my email set up with G suite and you helped me, um, do some of the email and domain stuff for my Josh Hall.co stuff. And then you were like, yeah, I lost like 90% of my business, you know, a little bit ago. So I'm doing more <laughs> like, website plumbing. I was like, what? You weren't, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like you're just so calm. But what a great uh, success story. I know it's still a process. I'm sure you're still, you know, you're going through it, but it looks like things are going well. You're, you've probably learned so much through this period. Yeah. I mean, what a, it's a great success story to say like, okay, here's a challenge. Everyone's going through a challenge. I mean, thank goodness we're in an industry. And when I say we, I mean you, but also everyone listening. Yeah. If you're in web design, you're in an industry that is still booming. And yes, yeah. some businesses are out of business or they're slowing down. So it's hurting everybody. However, more businesses are getting online. More businesses need help. Like think about how many people are now having to take their business online. So they need e-commerce. Yeah. They have no idea how to get started with domains and email. Like there are so many practical payment gateways, payment all, gateways all social of, media, yeah. like what just web stuff in general. Like there's so many areas of opportunity here. I know Josh, what's really great about that. Many people who had a sucky website, but they were kind of in denial now realize they need to do something about mm, it. <laughs> great point. Yeah. Great point. They're like, crap, my website hasn't got a contact submission in a year because it sucks. Maybe I should get it redesigned. Yeah. Because they're like, <laughs> the my business is online. The hosting is bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a great point, man. I love that. Again, you know, just kind of recap this. You you faced that challenge. You did not get down on yourself. I'm sure, you know, I'm no, sure you, you know had what? those like, feelings. You had those feelings, but you didn't let them control you when you started the pivot. No way. There's no way I'll let them control me. No. I mean, I'm, I don't know. Like I, uh, I, I was born positive. Something, <laughs> something is wrong. Like, uh, People think that I'm always happy. 
And of course, I go through all the fear and sometimes I'm angry or unhappy or whatever. But two things. Number one, I don't allow this to control me. Mm. So if I'm not feeling well, I'll just, you know, go out for a jog or go play some soccer and, you know, come back all relaxed. That's my thing. Like sports is my thing. I'm not a, like I'm not awfully fit. I'm a little bit fat, but <laughs> 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 if I go out for a, for a run or specifically soccer, because soccer, you know, any any team sport has a, a social aspect to it as well. You go there on the field, then you meet with your friends and you play together, and it's like you know, things are beautiful again. But the thing that we have to remember as well, you know, like when we were saying to people, uh, you're under pressure to ramp up. And you're under pressure to pivot and start growing your business and push here and push them. Pay bills as quickly as you can. (laughs) It gets scary. And you may be getting some jobs, but not enough jobs to put enough food on your table. And we've been there and some of us are still there. What I want to say to everybody, don't worry. Look, I, um, I was listening to a guy like one of these motivational speakers called Bob Proctor. I don't know if anyone knows Bob, but. He he was saying, like he was telling people his story. And then when somebody gave him advice and he said, you need to be doing this. And Bob said, he asked that person, his coach, but where does the money, where is the money going to come from? And the coach said, where it is right now. And he said, like, what do you mean? And he said, there is money somewhere out there in the universe, right? It's going to come to you at some point. Like, you know, there's a... <laughs> We don't know what controls this cycle or who controls this cycle, but there is money out there. Some people have money, right? Who is to say that it's not going to come to you? It will. It's just maybe not coming in abundance right now. And there's nothing to do with you. The only thing that you need to maintain is your positive attitude, work hard, learn as much as you can, and share your knowledge with the world. I mean, that you just hit the nail on the head. The, the money is there. What I've learned and my thoughts on this are, first of all, you have to work for it. A lot of people build a website and they're like, why am I not getting any leads? It's like, well, are you telling anybody about the website that you, and I'm saying this as somebody who went yeah. through this when I first got started, when I, you know, when I was learning how to get clients, I, I wasn't doing any networking or anything like that. And at the very beginning, I was like, why is I'm not getting many leads? It's like, well, I'm not out. I'm not telling anybody. I'm not putting myself out there. So you, you got to do that. You got to put yourself out there. But I truly believe, and I can say this from experience, and this is from my web design freelancer, as a web design freelancer, also as an agency owner, and now as a, an educator, the money comes to the helpers. If you yes, are definitely. sharing your knowledge and you're open and you're helping people, you're not going to end up on the streets and you will be successful. There may be different levels of success. You may not be a millionaire overnight, but you might get one, one website job. And then you might get two. And then once what happens once you get two, you get three. And then the referral train starts. And then once the client starts to know, like, and trust you, as long as you maintain good, competent work and good communication and everything I teach in my business course, then you're going to start the referral train. And that's when it happens. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens with consistency. And, and just, again, just that, that idea of, of sharing your knowledge and being helpful. It really all stems from that because, again, the people, and when I say get yourself out there, it's not the used car salesman type that's, you know, nope. here's my, it's not the people who come into my Facebook group and say, get your website done for a hundred dollars deal. And you know, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the slow and steady step-by-step, you know, yes, it may, it may not be overnight, but you would be surprised. I am a firm believer. You will grow your business more effectively and faster that way than spending money on advertising and, you know, trying to be too salesy. It's just, you know, that's a huge point. You you can't freak out in times of when you need to pivot. And yeah, I mean, it's really, it's, it's all about the the sales aspect. I mean, again, we're not coming across salesy, be a helper. Um, I just think that's huge, man. It sounds like that's exactly what you did. I don't know. I want to ask you as an example, who is your best hockey player? Oh, who? uh, Oh man. I'll tie this back to our conversation somehow, but I wanted to know a name. Okay. Well, mm, oh man, best hockey player. Okay. Here's probably a good example that's relevant. It doesn't have to be of all time. Could be now. So let's (laughs) go with, 
Let's go with the Blue Jackets goalie right now, Jonas Corposalo. And the reason I say that, and this is probably going to work perfectly with what you're talking about. Uh, so the Blue Jackets, for those who aren't hockey fans, uh, that's okay. You'll join me eventually. Um, the Blue Jackets are in the playoffs right now. And they're, you know, COVID stuff's going on, but they're still in the playoffs. But the goaltender now, Jonas Corposalo, just came in last night. The game went into five overtimes. That's the long. It's it's the fourth wow, longest game in times. NHL history. In, in the in the playoffs, you don't do a shootout. You don't stop. You play until somebody oh, wins. So they man. played like two and a half full games in one night. But I say that to say he just set an NHL record eighty five saves, and which is insane for a hockey game. That's insane. Uh, but I say all that to say I'm going with him because he was a backup goalie for years. Wow. This is when he's getting his shot. So you talk about paying your dues and waiting for the success to come and being patient and just keeping on working. That's exactly what he's doing. So Jonas Corposalo, Amr, that's my that's my answer for you. He's got a hard last name to pronounce, but I'm going to try and say it right. Jonas Corposalo. Corposalo. Yeah. Corposalo. So do you think, does anyone think that Jonas became a hockey player for the money? Pro- I mean... I don't think so. Maybe you have an aspect of it, but he obviously loves the we, game. We gotta you know, him. that's a good point. Like, <laughs> if he just did it for the money, he probably wouldn't have been a backup goalie for that long. No, no. And he, like, you know what I mean? He'd think, oh, this is not working. I'm going to leave now. Right? So it's not, money should not be the motivator to doing anything. Money, com- money is just means to, you know, to live. You know, it comes and goes. The only thing that you should be investing in is yourself. Your family, of course, and yourself, you know, just keep at it, keep learning, keep having fun. That man, what a great point. What a great point. Cause you know, I'm like, I am big on realistically having a monetary goal to work towards. However, same thing. I don't want students to be controlled by that. Like, yeah, I do want people to, to you shoot need for the six. Goal. Yeah, because you, need, you need, you know, if you don't measure, you don't know where you stand. Yeah, if you don't measure, there's no way. And that's why, like, for me, for years, I was like, why aren't I making more money? It's like, well, I first of all, I was undercharging. And I didn't have a goal. I didn't say, like, I want to make six figures this year because that will help you determine how you do your pricing and it will help you measure, like, okay, I need to charge more here. I need to get more clients. However, I am not, and I, you know, my students know this now too, the again, the money is not the goal as far as like your happiness. It's and the big thing about this podcast is whatever life you want to do, like whatever freedom looks like for you. Yeah, that's what I'm in trying to empower people to do. So like, you know, for me now, I need to make you know well into six figures to support my family. Josh in 2013, I didn't need that much. So 30 yeah. grand was like, dude, 30 grand that's this good, year. Yeah. 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 But now, like, yeah, it's a lot bigger. So, because you know, that's the thing too, the the monetary goals are just that. It just changes. It's got to suit you in your it, life. And you, you like want to make I, more and because you can just do more with, with, yeah. with more money, but that's not the happiness to your point. Like that's, it's got to be the passion ideally to help people because if you help look, people, I, yeah. I lost 90% of my income. We haven't gone a single day without anything missing from the life that we had before COVID. Mm. Like my kids didn't feel a difference. My wife didn't feel a difference. Of course she works as well. And we're lucky she didn't lose her job. But like if, if you, th- it's the law of attraction. If you think of bad things all the time, bad things are going to come because that's what your mind is pre- preoccupied with. Yep. If, you, if you have positive thoughts, and I don't mean it in the, in the sense of like, you know, uh, just, repeating things to yourself over and over again, like endlessly. But I, I mean it in the sense of, you know, um, that, that's why I always use examples from sports. The high performers, those players, they live to play and to score. So they go to bed at night thinking about tomorrow's game and how well they'll do. But if they go to bed at night with fear from the opponent that they're versing tomorrow, they probably play worse. So yeah, it's, no, it's a great, it's a great analogy. It's such a valuable point, man. I, I mean, we're definitely on the, the same mindset of this. And I mean, I understand it's easier said than done, particularly in times yeah. of change. And, and we you know people have bills and there's different needs. However, you're hitting on something so crucial. 
And that is to just maintain a good mindset. Easier said than done. And I found like oh. same thing. Like I have down days and I have, I still go through stuff. But the thing is what I've learned is I don't let that control me for long. And one of the best things I learned is, and I think I picked this up from Tony Robbins, one of his talks at some point. I love the it's, guy change your state. If you are down, yeah. if you are bummed, just do something, go for, a, I mean, you, you know, if you're bummed, like you can lay on the couch for a little bit, let you yeah, feel it. You know, you don't have to mask your feelings. I'm big on that. Walk the too. Dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to like, don't feel ashamed for feeling depressed for a little bit. That's fine, but no. don't let it control you for too long. Like, accept it, yeah. feel it. Okay. That sucks, but do something immediately. And the best thing you can do look, is to change your state. Yeah. And communicate is very important, right? If you have a burden, let it be divided by two, by three, by 10. Yeah. You know, it yeah. will become easier to carry. Yeah. Just don't so, post it on know, Facebook. Just don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Like talk with somebody. Yeah. And that's one great Write thing it about. Write on a piece of paper. You know, sometimes you when know. you get your feelings out and read it, it, it makes you feel a little bit more at ease. But don't post it somewhere because this could attract more negativity to you. Yes. Which is not, not oh, man. We're just getting into like just good life stuff here, man. Like. Yeah, yeah that, that's what, yeah. Yeah, that's a great exercise. I never did that, but I, I've heard that, that if you just and write it out. With your, with your life partner, your wife, your yeah. husband, your other, you know, significant other, uh, your parents, like, you know, uh, if, you, if you're close to your parents and, you know, you're blessed having both of them uh, nearby, uh, just th this will be like the best thing you do. Everyone is scared. It's, even, like, it's a pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> and pandemic. like... There's so much more talk with like mental health now, which is, I think is great. And there's people, if, if people don't have somebody they feel comfortable, there are like, you know, hotlines and all kinds of stuff where you can yeah. talk it out. I think that's so valuable and it is crucial during the pivoting time. And quite frankly, I've, that's been one aspect I think has been very cool for me is to see, cause I have Facebook groups just for my courses that are just for students. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that. Like I've seen a lot of people express, they're like, you know, I'm trying to get clients, you know, I'm getting a lot of good stuff from Josh. This has helped, you know, what are some things that you guys have done as well? And I've seen people like communicate like that. And it's been really cool just to, to have that trusted That's group. Great. Cause you yeah, can, share you can do it. Yeah. You could do it in public groups like my Facebook group, but you don't know what answer you're going to get from 21,000 people. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah. best to have like a, uh, some sort of like mastermind or group of people you can trust. So. Yeah, speak with your circle, like, you know, your, yeah, your, your closest circle. friends, like we're, we're all in this together. Like, you know, we, we will come up victorious. I, I don't think, you know, uh, this is going to be the last challenge we'll, we'll, we'll ever face as, as human beings. Uh, it's just funny that something so small you cannot see, such as a virus, can stop the whole world's economy at once. Uh, I but I think, I think the quote goes back to... Um, Oh, uh, oh my gosh! I'm blanking on it. I'm uh, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. I think the quote goes oh, back to him. Yeah, yeah. You Mr. know Rogers. what? You know what's coming. Uh, <laughs> I've seen so, the movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I, I'm sure of sure it was awesome. I want to watch it. But I believe the quote goes back to him and saying that in times of distress, whether it's economic, global pandemics, whatever, look for the helpers. And I think that's so valuable. And that's what I would encourage everyone to be. And you know, practically, it's doing everything we talked about helping your clients just because that will lead to sales and it will lead to quite frankly, like, you know, money and, and, and clients and that's, but it starts, it doesn't start there. It starts with helping. And, and I think that's so valuable because you're making an impact. You're Believe using, me, you have you know, no idea. Yeah. You have no idea where the opportunity is. And I'm not talking opportunity only as in sales, but like, uh, this is something that I'm probably saying in public for the first time I got into it by chance. I wasn't always in IT. I was like, <laughs> I, was, I, I used actually, I was a, an airline crew, cabin crew, or air host, or air hostess, or whatever you call no it. In the States. I, don't know, I don't know what's the name. I was the tea or coffee guy. And uh, yeah, and then I, uh, <laughs> in, um, I, I did this from 1994. I used to work for British Airways uh, from 1994 to 2001. And uh, I'd studied IT in university. And at the time, it was like very old, like Microsoft DOS. And uh, we used to use something called the COBOL, which was a language on mainframes that work in banks and things like that. It was so boring. And at the time, computers were boring. It was like blank, black or green screen with very small text on it. And you mm, have to code everything. Yeah. Oof. And it was so painful. But anyway, 
And uh, while I was flying and, you know, working for British Airways, the company had some courses, some training, and I got a lot of interest. And I started to take more courses and learn more. And, you know, uh, the courses were not, had nothing to do with IT. Then I met somebody who's a web designer. And you could imagine, like, what a web designer looked like in 2000. Like <laughs> HTML, JavaScript. There was, we didn't have CSS. I don't think 2000 we had CSS. Yeah, uh, no, I, yeah, I can't tell you for sure, but if you Google it, I would believe that it probably started after 2000. <laughs> and uh, I could be wrong. But anyway, and this guy said to me one day, you know what? There's a new course coming up. It's called Certified Internet, uh, I think Certified Internet Webmaster, CIW. Mm -hmm. And at this time, everybody I knew wanted to be a Microsoft engineer. Okay. Uh, so okay. me from Egypt in, in 2000, I think we had about 35,000 Microsoft Certified Systems Engineers or MCSEs. So naturally, when I wanted to get into IT, I wanted to do my Microsoft certification. And I started with networking module to understand what's networking and, you know, how do these networks talk to each other? And we, we had no wireless. Everything was wired, right? The, the, you know, there was no wireless network or wireless, wireless routers or whatever. And we had to actually, I had to do the wires with my teeth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> until Old school, until man. I learned to do the, the crimper, like the, <laughs> the tool. But anyway, and I got into it completely by chance. This guy had a lot of, of demand and it was just him. Like he was the only one in the whole of the Middle East, 22 countries who was certified to teach that course. And he was looking for somebody else to help him teach the course. And when I wanted to learn more about how the internet works, because I was fascinated, like, you know, I'm going to put myself out there like you guys in 1995. I didn't know how to switch off my computer. It, it was as bad as that. Like, I would. I understand, <laughs> I dude. I believe me. <laughs> I plug it. When I figure out what I do now, I'm like, how I got a D in typing in high school. Like that's how ironic what I do now. Like I was same here. I was not a techie dude. Yeah. So I, I used to break my computer, take it to the shop and then watch them fixing it so that I can learn how they fix it. And then next time I break it, I save myself the wait and the three days without the computer because mm. now I know how to fix it. Right. So you made so a ch you had a challenge, made a challenge yeah. into an opportunity. <laughs> and this guy taught me everything he knew about the internet, and everything he knew to pass that course and become like you know officially a certified webmaster at the time, and, and that was two thousand two thousand and one. And in two thousand and two, I quit British Airways and I went to work in Bahrain in one of the Institute of Technologies. Because I was only the second guy in 22 countries who can teach this stuff. Yeah. So that was a pure chance. And I, I never thought that I would leave the airline. I was having so much fun. Well, and another valuable point, you just never know where these opportunities are coming from. And I think in times of pivoting and getting through something like a pandemic, you you got to be vigilant for those and you got to capitalize yeah. on them. Like it, you never know. You never know when a conversation's going to happen or by chance, you know, if you're looking for clients, if you're just starting out, you just, somebody might offhand say something and, you know, you might have an opportunity to help somebody in that. That's how I got half of my clients is I just, I met somebody and then it led to something and it led to something and boom, yeah. there it is. And you, you never know what it is, like what's going to come your way, what's around the corner. Just keep an open yeah. mind, you know, and, and keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing the great work that you're doing, guys. This is, it's got, <laughs> put good things out there in the world. Good things are coming to you a hundred percent. That's yep, totally agree. That's a great way to say it, man. Well, hey, Amber, this has been awesome. I got to roll. I got to be. I'll be honest. I got to pee too. So let's let's wrap this up here. <laughs> let's wrap um, this up. Um, I just have one quick question for you. I've been wanting to ask you. You're you're building website plumber and everything, all these services. What happens when business picks up for you for the human talents, you know, kind of stuff? Are you do you think maybe you'll just keep on going full time website plumbing, or are you gonna just have you know? Are you going to do less with the HR stuff? What do you? What does that look like in the in the future? Ideally, like uh, I want to focus more on the plumbing stuff, uh, since everyone, like all the business owners nowadays, have finally realized that uh, a big chunk of the business can be conducted online. And I'm talking about the small guys here and there, and you know, 
the yoga studios, the bakeries in your local area, the, the plumbers, the, the real ones, <laughs> not the digital ones. And, you know, all those who had a website that was built years ago that had nothing on it. And now, as an example, uh, our local liquor store, when we were closed, uh, they didn't close. The liquor stores stayed open and they were selling like crazy. But they didn't want to have a line outside because it's COVID times and people should not be lining outside. So the idea that I gave them was, okay, you can just get a calendar, put it on your like release some time slots and people can book a time slot to come and pick up their stuff. So they can order online, pay online. And then since you guys don't deliver, they can just come and pick it up. You only need to, you know, one person in the shop every, I don't know, 10 minutes. So give time slots for 10 minutes. And if you want me to do it for you, they've done it on their own. They didn't need me, but like they got the idea. And that's the thing. Many people are thinking now, what can I do next? And you guys will be the helpers. That that's, that's what you, we all should be doing. Yeah. Well, that's a great way to end it, man. Love it. Love it. Love it. I totally agree. And I think you and I are both examples of that. Just help people share your knowledge. And man, it's the best thing to do when pivoting, particularly for a yeah. time like this. So Amber, thanks so much for your time, man. And for a really Thank inspirational you, story. We covered a lot of stuff. I mean, we could talk for hours, but we'll, we'll cut it off here. It's a <laughs> lot of great. Both of us. <laughs> uh, no, no, I mean, this has been, I'm, I feel pumped up, man. I'm inspired by this. Um, really inspired by your story mm-hmm. and kind of how you've, you've done really good, man. Keep on going through this stuff. I'm, I'm going to convince you to start up website plumber.co or something as your, your brand. Cause I know I have the know. domain. I just didn't do anything with it. So uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's my next step for you is to, to build that out. Cause I think it'll be, I, I would personally separate human talents, CA versus yeah. website plumber, but that'll be phase two here for you. But as of now, everyone can go to human talents.ca. Uh, obviously you're my guy. I can't recommend everyone enough to, to go to check you out and to use you for that stuff because man, you're just, you're awesome at that stuff. So Thanks so much for uh, Thank you, sir. for being super, super valuable for everyone listening. And uh, I, man, we're going to do this again. We're going to have some fun. See you soon. Take care and best regards to the lovely family. Thanks, man. You too. We'll talk soon. Take care, John. Hey, guys and gals. Just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.